Hello everyone, we have a polar curve here, which is r equals 3 minus 3 sine theta. And that's a cardioid. So we graph that cardioid right here. And then we are interested in finding the area bound by the cardioid, which is the region that's inside the cardioid. And then how do we find this area? There is actually a formula that will allow us to find this area really easily. And that formula is actually a equals, okay, so that's the area, is equal to the integral from a to b. And then the integrand is one half r squared d theta. Okay, so because we have a single polar curve right here and um, to find the area, we can use this formula. What we can do here is that we need to um, plug in this r in here so that now r is what? It's going to be replaced by three minus three sine theta. And then you may say, what about the limits? The limits are actually the starting value and then the ending value on how we trace out the whole curve. So let's think about this. If we start plugging in zero into the um, data here, we are going to get what? Three minus, actually, let's just write it down. So if we are to, um, if we are to plug in zero for data, so we are gonna get what, when data is equal to zero, what happens? We have r equals three minus three sine of zero. And actually, we know that sine zero is zero, so you are just gonna get three as the answer for r. And that actually corresponds to this point right here. This is when data is equal to zero. What happened is that the, um, the r is equal to three, so that's actually three units away from the origin because this is five, so three is about right here, okay? Now, what about, um, let's plug in some other values on here. Uh, we can plug in data equals pi. What happens is that we are gonna get what? r equals three minus three sine of pi. Okay, so what do we get here? Sine of pi is again zero, so r is going to be three again. Now, you know that our angle is actually this side, right? Because the angle is pi. And then r is still just three. So we are going to go three units in this direction away from the origin. So you're getting this point. And so data is actually equal to pi right here. And actually, this is the direction on how we trace out the curve. So the curve is actually being traced out in this direction indicated by the arrow, the counterclockwise direction. So <clears throat> we trace out part of the curve going from zero to pi, right? And then now what happened is that we can plug in a few more values, but then um, I'm not going to spend the time doing that here. I'm just going to let... Uh, data be uh, 2 pi, okay? Actually, I should just do one more before I get to the 2 pi, which is, uh, let's say the 3 pi over 2, which is in the direction of the negative y-axis. And when that happens, we have r equals 3 minus 3 times uh, sine of 3 pi over 2. What is sine of 3 pi over 2? That's negative 1. So you are actually going to be getting what? 3 minus negative 3, so you are going to get positive 6. And so starting from the origin, going in this direction, we need to go down, what, 6 units, which is this point. So that's data is equal to 3 pi over 2. So see that the curve is traced out this way. <clears throat> And so, of course, uh, you need to plot a few more points to actually see that um, the points between uh, data is equals pi and data equals 3 pi over 2 will be here, right? But then we're not going to do it here. And then if you just keep going, then if you go to the 2 pi, right? If you go to 2 pi, then you're going to get r equals, what, 3 minus 3 times sine of 2 pi. Remember that 2 pi is coterminal with 0, so we're going to get the same answer as when we plugged in the the zero. Okay, so we go back here. So you know that we actually trace out the whole curve once. And so we actually have a value for A and B already, which is the zero, the starting value, and then the ending value, the two pi. Okay, so now we are going to start setting up the integral. The integral would actually just be what? The integral from zero and then to two pi. Okay. 
and then we have the one over two over there so we just put that as one over two and then you may say what about the r the r is going to be replaced by this function here right because r is a function of data in this case so we are having um three minus three sine data and then square and then d data then you may say how do we integrate this how do we integrate this <clears throat> um first we cannot have a square here and try to integrate this one directly because there is also a sine function in there and so we need to expand this first so let's expand that i can actually pull the one half on the outside so we have zero to two pi and then we are going to expand that so let me just re Let's put down the limit one more time. So 2 pi right here. And then we have um, 3. Oh, actually, no, it's 3 squared, so we get 9. And then minus. Now, there is a shortcut for expanding a binomial square, right? How do we do that? That shortcut is actually this one. So let's just recall something right here. That's actually just what? A minus B squared. And what is that equal to? You square the first term, minus 2 times a times b, and then you add the square of the second term. So you square the first term, which is squaring the 3, so we get the 9 here. And then we are going to get the minus 2. So we put the minus 2 right here. And then you need to multiply a and b, right? The first term and the second term multiply together. So we multiply those two terms together. We are going to get, what, 3 and then 3 sine of theta. Now, <clears throat> the negative sign is already being put in here. So when I put down the b, I do not include that negative sign with the, uh, the 3 sine data, right? <clears throat> and then plus what? plus the square of the b, which is 9 and then sine square theta. So we have that. <laughs> OK, so what we can do is that we can simplify this right here, which will give us nine minus um this is nine times two that's 18 sine theta plus and then nine of sine square data d data um we can integrate this nine easily we can also integrate this negative 18 sine data easily but that one we actually need to use the half angle formula because it has a square on the sign right so how do we integrate this one we need to first recall another formula which is the half angle formula so sine square of theta is actually equal to 1 over 2 times 1 minus cosine of 2 theta this formula right here, this identity here, it's really useful um, <clears throat> when it comes to turning the sine square into a um, <clears throat> an expression with a trick function without a power. So the power it's going to be one for this cosine, right? So that's and we that will allow us to integrate this function directly. Okay, so let's do that. Um, we can actually break all the integrals apart first, right? So we have 1 half, and then the integral up from 0 to 2 pi of the 9, and then d theta, okay? And then minus 1 half, right? Don't forget that this 1 half will apply to all the turns, right? So we are going to get the 1 half again, and then from 0 to 2 pi of the 18 sine theta. Lastly, it's the... Um, 1 over 2 and then the integral from 0 to 2 pi and then now the 9 stays there but then we need to turn the sine square into this formula right here so we get the 9 and then we have the 2 and then you may say why do we get the 2 at the bottom because of the 1 half 9 is in the numerator and then the 1 half is, is at the bottom and then we have that 1 minus cosine of 2 data 
Uh, so even for a simple problem like this, it's going to be tedious with the calculation. The setup is the part that's more fun to do. Okay, let's start doing the integration here. So we are going to be getting um, 1 over 2. Now 9 is a constant, and we are integrating with respect to data, so we are going to get 9 data here. Going from 0 to 2 pi. Okay. Continue here. So as you can see here, as you can see here, this 1 over 2 times this negative 18 will, no, actually, let me say that again. This negative 1 over 2 times the positive 18, right? It's going to give us negative 9. So we have yeah, negative 9 right here. And then we need to integrate this sine data. How do we integrate this sine data? We are going to get what? negative cosine theta going from 0 to 2 pi. Next, we have um, positive 1 over 2 times 9 over 2. That will give us, what, 9 over 4. OK. And then now we need to start integrating. So what do we get here? We still have two turns, so we need to put parentheses. We can put a pair of brackets right here. And then when we integrate the 1, we are going to get what? We are going to get data. Remember, our variable is data. So the 1 will give you the data. And then um, minus. Now, the antiderivative of cosine 2 data would be sine of 2 data. OK, this one, you do not need to do a use up. You can just. Um, just multiply the sine of two data by a constant so you can reverse that chain rule. Um, you know that when we differentiate the sine of two data, we are going to get the cosine two data with an extra two. To cancel the extra two, we need to multiply by its reciprocal, which is one over two, and then we can cancel that extra two. And then evaluate it from zero to two pi. So now the rest is really just plugging in numbers and doing the calculation. So let's finish that. So um, you know that when we plug in the 0, everything will be 0. So all, we only need to worry about plugging in the 2 pi into the data, which will give us 9 pi. OK, 9 pi. How do we get 9 pi? It's um, the 2 will get cancel the 1 half. And then the 9 here, there, there was the pi here. So we get the 9 pi. And then here, we are going to get positive, OK? And then 9, right? Negative 9 times negative will give you a positive 9. There is a cosine, right? You plug in the 2 pi in there. You plug in the 0 in there. You are going to get what? You are going to, you're going to get 0. How do we get 0? Think about this. Cosine of 2 pi is what? It's 1. Cosine of 0 is what? It's also 1. So when you subtract them, you are going to get 0. Um, I can actually still just show the work right here just to just to do that. So we have the, um, the cosine of 2 pi minus the cosine of 0. And keep going. Now this last turn right here plus the 9 over 4. So you know that we can plug in the 2 pi into the data, so we're going to get 2 pi. OK, if you plug in the 2 pi in here, sine of 2 times 2 pi, sine of 4 pi, that will give you that will give me 0. So we don't need to worry about it. You plug in the 0, you get 0. Plug in the 0, you get 0. So everything is 0, right? Except just when you plug in the 2 pi into the data. So we just have 2 pi right here. And so also, this thing is becoming 0 as well. Right? And then we know that 0 times 9 is 0. So we only need to worry about the 9 pi and then the 9 over 4 times the 2 pi. Um, if you're doing the calculation on this one, this one will actually give us what? This one will give us, if you cancel out the 2, cancel out the 4, you're going to get 9 over 2 pi. OK, 9 over 2 pi. 
and then adding the what the nine pi, right? So finally, we get the answer, which is what if you get the common denominator, you multiply this by two, you get eighteen. So you're going to get twenty seven pi, and then over two. It's really because of the eighteen, right? Yeah. So I can just write it here. It's actually just 18 pi over 2. So adding the 18 pi over 2 and then the 9 over 2 pi, right? You're going to get 18 plus 9 is 27. The pi over 2 stays the same. So that's our final answer. Okay, so the area for the region that's bounded by this cardioid is 27 pi over 2. And as you can see, the setup is really simple, right? It's This is a really typical example of finding the area that's inside the uh polar curve. But then you can see that the calculation is tedious. Okay. Yeah. And then you also need to know some of the um, uh, identities so that you can integrate the sine square or cosine square. Okay. Depending on what function that you have right here. Okay. So that's it for this problem. If you like my video, please subscribe to my channel. Give me a like and then leave me some comments. And then uh, also please check out my other videos. Thank you for watching this video. I was